Hold up, I am on my way I'm in motion Let's go to the ocean Yeah, let's go outside We can hang out on the beach without freezing Welcome to the beautiful city of Niche and Vlogmas Day 3, guys. I'm excited. I'm actually at Hotel Zen. I'm going to be staying here for the next few days and they just put together this massive breakfast for us. Now, they invited me here a few days ago and I'm actually going to be staying here for the next few nights, checking out their facility, their hotel, their staff is incredible. And I'm excited to show you more of this place. This breakfast is usually a buffet styled breakfast. They have a toaster bar, coffee making machine, cereal bar, yogurts, jams, water, all kinds of things. But right now, however, because of COVID, we're not actually allowed to touch everything ourselves. So they have prepared a beautiful table for me. Now, before I dive on into the breakfast, let me show you guys my room. I filmed it last night and I think you'll really enjoy this place. Now, if we come on in here, like I said, I got a real simple room. They have many different rooms you can choose from. I got a simple one with a nice queen size bed, closet in this direction, desk, TV, a beautiful mirror. And what I love most about this place is the bathroom. How beautiful is this place? I love the massive shower head, another mirror, and everything is, you know, to COVID specification. Now that we're all freshened up and we got some good food on us, it's time for us to head into the city center and explore niche a bit. Now, Eat The Mar came up with this good term called fake sun. And essentially what that is, is what's going on right now. It's a nice, beautiful, sunny day, but it's so cold as shit. Cold. So cold. <laughs> it's like zero today. And I have a feeling it's gonna be pretty tough to stay warm out here. So I guess I'm driving. Wish us luck. Should I look first? No? Crazy. He's driving and be careful, dude. <laughs> I'm a horrible driver, guys. Literally. Horrible driver. And I just realized that my um travel insurance policy just ran out, so I gotta renew that today. Actually, you are driving so fast. I'm a speed racer, bro. <laughs> Every time I get in a car and there's this stick, show him the stick, bro. Show him the stick. Oh, yeah. I feel like I'm on Fast and the Furious or something, you know what I mean? <laughs> I never thought in the wildest dream We just made it here to the city center. It only took us about eight minutes to get here from Hotel Zen. So an incredible place to base yourself out of. Right now we're actually right by the fortress here at, at here in Niche. So we're gonna walk up in there and explore it for a little bit before diving on into the city center. We actually got invited out here last night by a friend, someone who met me on the internet, invited me here into the city center. We came out here, we walked around a little bit. I wanna show a little clip to you guys right now that I filmed last night on Instagram and we'll continue on with our trip here through the fortress. The main reasons I came to Niche was because they have this huge, like beautiful Christmas tree. Let me show you guys. Wow. We just walked into the fortress and one thing that always blows my mind here in Serbia is that every city pretty much has a fortress. Every city in town has a fortress and they're all pretty, pretty done up inside. Like we're walking in this one right here. You got souvenir shops. We just passed by a jazz museum, a couple restaurants, a coffee? bars. Yeah, let's bro. He reads my mind. Man, <laughs> the best travel partner. Now Itamar is actually considering starting a YouTube channel. So let me know down in the comments if this guy should start one. I he filmed his starting. first vlog yesterday and I think he would do pretty good. I think he'll, he's pretty entertaining. Let me know in the comments if you want to see Eat Mar. Find that motivation and Thank start you, documenting dude. his trip. <laughs> hey, thank you. Nice, we get some cushions. Yeah. Thank you. So she just brought us out some seat cushions, which is really cool because these uh, little metal benches were actually quite cold. But now my butt feels kind of cozy, kind of warm. I think I think we made a good choice. Ethamar really wants to show you the seat. Look at that. So nice, huh? So nice here in niche. We're right actually at Cafe in. Vanilla. Cafe Vanilla. I ordered myself a cappuccino. He got himself an Americano. What a great way to start the day. Itamar actually just pointed out something very interesting. Our coffee's just made it out, but go ahead, tell the people what you notice is big difference. About the coffee, what we're talking about, about the right bill. now. 
Yes, so they're giving the coffee with Astri and the bill under the Astri. I don't know why. I just asking Chris if I want to order something else or what I need to do now. But I because don't know. in our countries where we come from, um, no one ever brings you a bill anywhere in a restaurant until after your meal because it's kind of a sign of showing you that you're kind of rushed, you know, and um, you don't feel so welcome in the states that's our our culture at least so that's one thing that he just pointed out and i haven't even been paying that much attention to it because it doesn't bother me too much but that's just a another difference here in serbia i think it's pretty cool they bring you out your um your receipt what with your meal or with your drinks and you usually pay or you don't have to pay right away but you know how much you're paying not like when when you're chilling somewhere at a cafe in the states and you're just drinking drinking buying snacks and you really don't know how expensive your bill is gonna be until after. I always thought I'd be waiting, waiting in vain, but suddenly there you were. We just made it on top of the fortress. Now, the courtyard we were just eating at is actually down there. Eat the more. Just climb down into this thing. I don't know what that is, but I'm staying out of there. However, the view from up here is incredible. Wow, look at the city of Niche behind me, guys. So stunning. Now, it sucks to see all the graffiti on the fortress, especially because this place is a protected site. The Serbian government made it a protected site in, the 19, in 1980, I believe. Um, but this fortress itself was built in the 18th century. And it's absolutely stunning. It's a bit different than the one I, then the Calamagdan or the Belgrade Fortress, and also the Petro Varadin that I've seen in Novi Sad, but still nonetheless beautiful. Now we're not gonna spend a lot of time here at the Niche Fortress because we've seen a lot of fortresses since we've been here, and there are a couple things here in Niche that are super iconic on their own that can't be found in other places. So we're just um, briefly gonna walk around this place a bit more and then head on out to whatever we have planned next. Now, don't Take offense to that this place is beautiful except um yeah once you've seen one fortress you've seen them all man especially in certain regions of the world it's not until you go to like spain and go visit a fortress that you're gonna find completely different architecture than you're gonna find here here in serbia a lot of the fortresses they're kind of the same so right now we're actually about to hop into the car and make the three minute drive it's only about a 15 minute walk but it's a three minute drive to the red cross um, concentration camp now it's right <laughs> yeah we're definitely driving we're not walking um, we're gonna get there show you guys around this very historical and tragic site and I think we'll go into a a few minutes of silence to pay some respect for the thousands of people that lost their lives inside of this horrific place all right guys, so we just made it here to the concentration camp. This one is called the Red Cross Nazi concentration camp. Now, I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna put a couple facts on the screen, but I think it's time for us to go into a moment of silence and experience this for ourselves. Just made it out of that museum and I must say it was quite an emotional experience. It it just hurts my heart so much every time I enter a facility like that. And I just can't believe that humans were and quite honestly still are capable of doing that to other humans based off of religion, cultural differences, and the fact that you look different. It's terrible. So sad, but this is definitely a place you have to come pay your respects to when you visit Niche. I was actually had no idea that there were concentration camps in Yugoslavia or in this region of the world in the 40s when all of this Nazi movement was taking place. 
I was a little uneducated in that aspect and I feel like a lot of people are probably going to be surprised to find out that there are concentration camps here in Serbia. Now, you can buy an entrance ticket to walk into the museum. It's 200 just to enter this place or 300 and it includes the concentration camp, the skull tower, which is where we're heading to right now. And I don't know. Oh, National Museum of Niche. So we just made it here to the Skull Tower and, or where you check in to go into the Skull Tower and there's actually this really talented guy paint, hand painting a mural on a wall right now and along this place there's already just so many skulls. It looks pretty cool. So we're walking into the chapel now. I guess the Skull Tower is located inside of this chapel. It looks absolutely beautiful. It's cold. Itamar has to use the bathroom. He's been having to use it for like an hour now. I need to pee. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go check this out so that we can go out and let him use this bathroom. So that was actually really cool. I just pulled up some uh, trusty handy dandy Wikipedia information about this place. So the Skull Tower was actually created during the time of the Ottomans. It was built in May 1809 and at one point it stood over four and a half meters tall and had 952 skulls. Right now I only counted about 12 to 19 on each side. So definitely nowhere near 952, but still so sick. Just made it to the city center and we're actually about to go and get ourselves a bite to eat. We've gotten some recommendations of two kafanas. One of them is Bised and the other one is Mesed. And they're actually both right next door to each other. So I think we're just gonna walk up to the, the front of these establishments and make our decision up or make our mind up, I should say. So Itamar just helped me make that decision up. He said that we're gonna go into Bizar. We like the way it looks a little bit more, a lot more traditional. Let's walk up in there and get some food, eh? So he just brought us out an English menu and they have cold appetizers, hot appetizers, salads. I just seen a couple plates of food on other people's desks and they look amazing, or on other people's tables. Restaurant specialties, fish, roast, grills, vegetables. I think we came to the right place, guys. So my meal just came out and it smells so good. This is pork cutlets a la niche. Now, I'm ready to dive on into this. I've been hungry and I love me some pork, baby. Wow, that looks like a juicy fat slab of pork. You gotta try this, eat them. It's so good, there's so much seasoning, so much going on up top. Oh, look at the that. Source, dude. It's actually not too. I thought it was gonna be spicy. It looks spicy, but it's sweet. Oh man. Absolutely perfect. You got tomatoes under, onions. Almost tastes a little bit of barbecue to die for. Itamar just gave me one of his chicken bacon kebab pieces. Oh my god. My god. This has been some of the best pork that I've had in a very long time. Now, I would say this is my favorite dish that I've tried, but I say that about everything because everything is so good. But this is cutting it very close. We just left that kafana. How was the meal, bro? Man, the best meal today. It was, it was. It was incredible. So damn good. The food had so much flavor. Um, at the end, there was this older man who sat down on the table next to us just drinking rakia. And we ended up just talking to him for about an hour. He was actually a, to uh, a tour guide in Israel yeah. for Serbs. So he knew a lot about Itamar's country and that made him very happy. And I'm just starting to talking with him. I saw him drink the rakia. I just he literally just said, rakia? yo, is that rakia? And, and conversation took off. Yeah, and one and a half hour, we were just talking and spend good time together. So now we're just gonna go for a brief second back into the city center. Um, well, you guys haven't seen the city center yet, but we came here last night. We're gonna go walk around for a bit. I gotta go to a cash machine and toothbrush. I gotta buy a new toothbrush. We just made it onto the main walking street. And I must say, there's actually quite a bit of people out here right now. A lot of stores, a lot of 
Um, there's actually a big shopping center right behind me called the Forum. And overall, it's a pretty cute vibe. Now there are like a lot of these little snowballs and a few Christmas decorations. Other than that, you know, your typical walking street here in Serbia. We actually just made it here to a center, um, a main center square location here in the center. Now, there's actually this big horse up top on the statue and one of our friends that we met here last night actually told us that this place is used as like a meeting point here in the city. Most people that live here in Niche will be like, yo, let's meet at the big horse. So, pretty cool. So I just walked out of this store right here called DM and DM is basically where you get like all of your hygiene products. Got me a two pack of toothbrushes. I'm good to go now. Um, I was actually shocked. These things were $2, like $1.89 for both, both of these Colgate brushes in the US. I just bought a brand new Colgate before coming out here. And this damn thing was $6 in the US for one. You were always smarter. I was the one to take a look. I remember how it started. 